All right, here is some quick settings that I have changed in the BIOS. Actually, I did this on day one of, of owning this. I did this on the one that I returned, but um, we'll do it on this one too. So as you can see, it did not turn on when I opened the lid. I don't like that. I don't want my computer to turn on when I open the lid. The other thing is that on a lot of computers, you get the option to, um, usually you can press function and there's some key here that will let you lock in the multimedia keys. And to show you an example of that, you can see right here, it has the function lock. So you would just hit function, lock, and then when you press, you know, your volume or whatever, you don't have to hit the function key and then you can unlock it. So when you press, you know, F1, it is, you know, the help menu. Uh, unfortunately, the Alienware looked all over and it does not have a key to do that. You actually have to do it in the BIOS. And uh, honestly, the, the BIOS are way different on this thing than they are on here. On here, it's very much like you would expect. On here, it's... Oh, here, let's see if we can get these to load into the BIOS. And I have a feeling it's not gonna go. It's gonna go to Windows. This one did too, what the heck? Okay, here we go, we're in the BIOS. Um, let's redo this one. Okay, so in here, this kind of goes over the specs. It's kind of funny that it has the Intel UHD graphics, but the system um, does not have access to that because of the uh, dang it, it did it again. Um, the system doesn't have access to that as a default. There's not a way for me to, to use it because of the whole um, I believe it's what is it it's it's directly the monitor is directly to the gpu uh, so that's why you can't turn off optimus or anything um, if you have the 144 hertz display you can um, so in this it's kind of irrelevant but uh there's the third so it's a laptop version uh, which you know it's to be expected you're not going to get desktop performance from a laptop all right here we go so very different. The BIOS of the Dell G3 3590, as you can see, is very menu-like. Um, you can use your cursor. And on here, it's very traditional. So uh, let's go through what I have changed. So by default, power on lid open is enabled. And that is basically like I demonstrated when I opened it up, the computer will turn on. I don't need that. Uh, USB power share, you can disable this if you want. Um, basically, when the computer's off, the USB ports still have power. So you want to charge your phone, you can turn the computer off, and you'll still get power out of the USB ports. Uh, I left it enabled because, honestly, I don't ever charge my phone. Um, you also can turn on USB wake support. So if you plug something into the computer, it will uh, wake the computer up. And then this is the function key. So this is the primary function key behavior and I have it set to multimedia. So I don't need to press function and then volume to change the volume. I can just press volume. Um, and then we have our Intel software guard extensions and camera. Honestly, I disable that. I don't use a webcam and um, I don't need a uh, camera enabled. As far as the TCC controls, if you are interested in doing that, they are under performance options. And here's where you can do the TCC activation and disable it or turn it off. Um, 
as you can see, mine are off. I do have this thing currently underbolted. So we're gonna go ahead and just save and we're gonna exit out of here. So those are the changes that I've made since I've owned the computer. I did this to the uh, one I returned at Best Buy to. So whoever actually gets the one I got at Best Buy, they're not gonna be able to open the lid because I never reset that and their multimedia keys are default, which honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't want that because you're gonna be, you know, adjusting your volume and everything more so. So, a little bit of a disappointment that Dell didn't, or, you know, or Alienware design like multimedia is like its previous generations, but this works, it's sleek, it's modern, and it's overall a pretty, pretty good design. But one thing I will say though, I do like the Intel Core i7. I wish it had the generation and I wish it had an NVIDIA sticker like we see here, but not really big of a deal. And I will quickly demonstrate how I get the Alienware Command Center to work. And this works about 90% of the time. So you want to do as soon as you load your computer, I have gone in and pulled this shortcut or this application out of the Alienware in um, the Alienware software program files. And uh, I've noticed that as soon as I click yes, and then if I load the Alienware command center, give it a minute here. Now that I'm making a video on it, it probably won't work. And unfortunately, this is a very common problem with the service. Uh, sometimes when it's loading, I can do that. Otherwise, we may have to run this one. We'll go ahead and click yes. And we load it a little bit further. Let's see if we can get those thermals and the overclock to load. Sometimes I have to go back and do that. There you go. So there's an easy way to get it to work. You just have to use these and I'll show you where they're at. So if you go to your start menu, uh, go to your program files. It's gonna be in program files, not the 64-bit version, but just the regular. And then Alienware, load the command center. So the first one that you will see is right there. I'm sorry, right there, service launcher, and then the OC controls are going to be located in OCC control, or OC control service, and just scroll till you see there. And just to make it convenient, I just put that on my desktop <clears throat> in that folder there. And then you can also see that I have It undervolted a little bit, just by 30. So this, with it being undervolted the way I have it, this is giving me, let's just run a quick test. That's on battery mode, to say the least here. But we're mainly looking at those thermals. Uh, plugged in, I think the max that it went to is 92, which I'm okay with 92 if that's the max temp it's going to get. Before I did the undervolting, it was at about 96, I think the highest it went. Um, I think right there just spiked to 93. Looks like our power throttle uh, lit up here. And again, this, this is not plugged in. So my results are definitely going to be significantly different if it were plugged in, but it just gives you an idea of how hot that the system can.
can run. And we'll look at our score here. And again, like I said, this is totally on battery power. Uh, so we got a 74. That was what I tested it the other day after um, changing it. And that was undervolted at the same volts, but plugged in. So yeah, that is how I have it set up. And like I said, the Alienware Control Center, it seems to be working. Um, in the event that it doesn't, I just uh, not reset, but shut the computer off and turn it back on. And as long as you do that, pretty much as soon as the computer loads, I'd say seven out of 10 times it's gonna work. And I'd like to give it a 10 out of 10, but I have ran into plenty of times where it doesn't, but at least this does work more often times than not. And I know Alienware software is very glitchy. I have the same problem with this thing. Um, I couldn't change any settings on this, but I could at least go in and check the temperature and um, it did the same thing on here. And I just kind of gave up with it. But there you have it.